music that reaches our souls, the depths of our souls. And this is precisely what we're experiencing today. We're bringing a message of love and hope. And within that message of love and hope are embodied the symbols of universal brotherhood, truth, reconciliation. And I'd now like to introduce our wonderful guests, uh, Stevie Salas, who has already been with us on, on uh, Sunday. He is the executive producer of the movie Rumble, which everyone saw on Sunday. We had a wonderful, wonderful talk. It's been archived. Uh, Stevie is originally from San Diego. He's an Apache guitarist who has traveled the world. He broke it. He, he, uh, his, his career really took off in 1988 with a worldwide tour with Rod Stewart. And he performed at the LA Forum, uh, Madison Square Garden, among other places. Uh, big tour with Mick Jagger. So amazing that we have him right here on the stage with us now in Collingwood. And he is also the producer of another movie we'll be hearing today, Water Walker, which tells, it's a documentary. It tells the story of Autumn Peltier and her struggles with water, with the flowing of water, clean water, all throughout the vast region where the Anishinaabe people live. It's a heart-wrenching story. And Duke's words will then come in and bring a message of hope and reconciliation. And with that note, I always like to begin these evenings with a land acknowledgement. So we acknowledge the area that we work in today is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Huron-Wendat peoples. And we're very grateful for this beauty and the resources we can now share to create this beautiful art. To my right, Graham Greene, established actor, acclaimed, what a joy, Tip this completely last minute, Stevie Salas's great friend, and in a second, I'm going to pass on the microphone to Stevie, who will share us the story of how they met. And anyone from 1990, the Kevin Costner, amazing movie, Dances with Wolves, Graham Greene received an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Nominee, nominee, apologies. <laughs> That's right. So I'm now going to hand it to Stevie Salas, and he'll share the story. It's a fascinating story of how they met on Six Nations Reserve, just south of Hamilton. And it all begins, I believe, we had a wonderful lunch today, with Abbey Road Studios. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just want to say, uh, in, a, in, in true drive-in fashion, just for old times' sake, Steve me, made me ride in the trunk on the way in here. <laughs> Before I knew that they weren't charging a cover, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we smuggled you in. <laughs> Well, Graham, Graham Greene uh, is, of course, everyone knows he's a legend. He's an incredible actor, let alone an indigenous actor. He's, he's, a, he's a global actor right up there with all the best. And we have a joke because I was nominated for an Emmy Award uh, last, this, last year, and I lost. So I, on my Instagram, it says Emmy Loser because people always say, Emmy-nominated producer. Well, that means you lost. Otherwise, it's the <laughs> Emmy-winning producer, right? So then now Graham's like, well, I was nominated for Academy Award. And Graham said to him, Academy Award loser. <laughs> so that's our, we share this, uh, yeah. our gag together. But Graham, I was uh, spending some time. I, f I flew to Fiji with actor Adam Beach. I was on my way to Australia to work with a band, and I, and I heard about this company, Sawyer Water, and an, an organization called Give Clean Water. They were going into villages in the Solomon Islands and Fiji and in Africa, and they, were, they had this simple, inexpensive way to clean up water in these villages where these kids were really sick, with cholera and typhoid and all these diseases, sores all over their bodies, and and the kids were dying, and most of it was from from you know the stomach uh, type of uh, dysentery, and I mean I just thought this was crazy, and they were telling me that they were going to these places and cleaning them up for like pennies, I mean really inexpensive, not like uh, you'd think you need to have a ten million dollar, twenty million dollar water treatment facility, and and these guys were going in with these filters that were like mini filters that were like kidney dialysis machines, uh, but, but without the machine, kidney dialysis filters, uh, that, very similar to that. 
And so I flew into Fiji and I went and did, went to some villages and we did this and I thought to myself, I said, I actually said to them, I said, why am I three quarters of the way around the world doing this when we could be doing this back home? And the guy, they were all like, what are you talking about? And uh, they called me up a week later and they go, oh my God, after you said that, we did some research and we found 1,400 communities in North America that are on boil alert still, that have no water. People going to the bathroom in buckets, uh, no drinkable water at all, things like that. So we started to go into this program of wanting to do something about it. So later on, Graham and I had met um, through a charity that we both work with called the Dreamcatcher Charitable Foundation. And we, um, Graham I knew was really interested in getting things done. And when I told him about the water thing, he says, next time you go up there, they need an elder, I'm going. So what happened was while I was up in there, I, I heard a story about a young girl named Autumn Pelter, and I, I was fascinated because in, in indigenous culture, if people feel like we have no role models unless we go back to 150 years ago, right? And I knew that with Rumble we had role models. And all of a sudden here's this, at the time, a 14-year-old girl speaking at the United Nations and she's speaking at Davos in Switzerland. And she's just this little girl um, taking on the world is what it felt like. And I said, I have got to get to know this girl. And when I met her, I said, I've got to make a film about her. And... Um, we went, we met with her, we followed her to the, into the United Nations, and um, I called Graham. And Graham said, I'll narrate the film, which added this weight and this wisdom and this power to it. And it also added, uh, it gave us credibility because when we, we debuted at the TIFF Film Festival, Tim, Toronto International Film Festival, and then the next film festival we were right in was Doc NYC. So we were in these really prestigious film festivals, and a lot of it had to do with, with Graham, because Graham gave us credibility and power. And uh, so the film's only 14 minutes long, but you're going to hear Graham, and I call him the, he's the Native American Darth Vader. His voice is so perfect and amazing. Well, it was the best 14 minutes I ever spent in my life. As uh, Stevie said, I need you to come down and narrate this film. And I said, I'm on the plane, let's go. So we went down there, I went down during the, uh, the height of the COVID epidemic and I was in and out of hospital with surgery on my leg and I, I, just, I still went and we got it done. And uh, in 14, I don't know, <laughs> it took 14 minutes to shoot it, 14 minutes to record it and I was back on the plane again. So uh, that was quite an experience to do it and listen to it and get some history about Adam or uh, uh, Ms. Peltier and all the work that she's done and all the things that she's going to do without any help from anybody, basically. The government wouldn't help her out or fund her, but there's, there's a girl named Greta Thunberg in, in where is she from? Switzerland? Sweden. 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 Yep. Sweden. And the government has backed her, but nobody's backing uh, Little Autumn. So Stevie and, and his organization, uh, the Grand River Enterprises, and their uh, people there, they got some money together and funded her to do that. And, and the, the, they were going to pay me to uh, narrate this film. And I said, no, make sure she gets it gets my fee to uh, help her get around and, and not worry about this sort of thing. And if she needs more, I'll give her some more. <laughs> yeah. So, Graham, you, you've played so many different roles in your life, so many different hats. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, I remember you mentioned from carpenter to uh, sound technician, yeah. and you have Jucasa, an amazing sound studio um, at the Six hey. Nations Reserve. Oh, no, I don't have that, no. I don't. Uh, I I did audio work. I was an audio engineer, a mm -hmm. draftsman, uh, civil technologist, uh, a welder, all this other stuff, and uh, finally got into acting. And 140 films later, here I am. Yeah. 140 films only. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a little slow. And it took some time off. I, I found a quote of yours. Um, you, you can play everything from an old Jewish man to a black transvestite. Oh, <laughs> I did. I had to play a black transvestite in a piece of theater. At the end, I jumped out of a window in my underwear carrying my high heels. Now, who wouldn't want to see that? <laughs> Which movie was that? No, it was, it was a play. A play, okay. Somebody, Somebody's Returning, written by... Uh, uh, George George Walker is his name. 
But uh, that was an interesting piece of work. <laughs> what are some of the challenges now that we're facing? The, I mean, the, the Anishinaabe people are, are a very vast territory. And I think the movie is going to be quite, quite an eye-opener of... When, when was the movie produced? We cut it during the pandemic. It was really hard to make because of the pandemic. Um, but we got around some things and we were able to get it done. Uh, like I said, Graham had to fly out. We, I called Graham and he was, he was having some problems with his leg and he had to have a surgery. So I had actually, I called Graham. I was really concerned. I spoke to his wife, Hillary. He was laid up pretty good in the hospital, and I thought, this is, we're going to have to have Graham do the next one. And so I called West Studi. I told him, Graham's not feeling well. Can you fill in? So West Studi said, okay, let me know. I'll do it. And then Graham called and said, I'm doing it. <laughs> really? And he got out of the hospital, and he had cane and a, the whole thing, and he flew across the country to San Diego. Uh, we had a hotel that you couldn't get a restaurant. You couldn't eat. It was really, you know, it was the pandemic. It was really hard to get it done. But, you know, Graham was determined to do this film uh, for Autumn. And, you know, he's just the kind of guy Graham is, right? You know, the guy, uh, you know, he can hang out with Mel Gibson, but he still remembers who he is and where he's from, and it's pretty amazing. Hey, why not? <laughs> I am who I am, said Popeye the Sailor Man. And, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's a worthy problem, prog uh, program, uh, and uh, a wonderful thing to do. I was telling Stevie this afternoon, okay, you got your fame and whatever but you can use that fame for something good to attract people to notice good in the world to function as something uh, a vessel that carries good carries information that doesn't upset people by pounding them over their head but lets them understand what's going on it's the, the key to all knowledge is understanding so that's where that started boom Wonderful, Graham. Thank you so much for joining us today, and enjoy the, the presentation, the concert, yep. enjoy your stay in Collingwood. Let's give uh, Graham Green and Stevie a nice Collingwood welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, real quick, I want to tell you, too, you're going to love uh, Duke Redbird. He is a legend. He is in the most, has the most amazing energy, and uh, you guys are in for a treat. That is one special human being. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you.